I'm going fossil hunting today on a really good spring tide. I'd love to find another plesiosaur backbone like I did back along with this specimen that I plucked out of a rock pool. A really low tide here today at Lyme Regis. I'm out fossil collecting. I'm going to head down towards Charmouth on the low tide and try and find some uh, ammonites and uh, ichthyosaur backbones. Anything that really washes out at the low tide mark. It's quite a plump top stone nodule for uh, having a tap at. Give it a crack with the hammer. Got the safety spectacles on. Hit it back that way just to see a nice ammonite appear. You can see the keel of the ammonite appear there. And there's the impression the other side. I'm pleased with this one already. So now I'm going to tap down through the rock and split this ammonite out of this uh, limestone nodule. There we go. A bit of preparation still to do on that specimen. But look at the ammonite there protruding out of that rock. There's a little bit more whittling away of the rock. Let's give it a tap down this side here. There we go, look at that. 190 million year old ammonite there. Nice colours, that one. Just a small hammer to do the uh, tapping of these right rocks with. It's only a small nodule. I'm not hitting the bigger rocks into the next century like you see a lot of uh, people just sit down and do. You've got to look for the right rocks. The right rocks that give the game away. There might be something more inside like an ammonite impression on the outside of the rock. Well, pretty handy having a pair of binoculars with me today, keeping an eye on the competition, but also to Mike Harrison from at Mike Harrison's Fossils on Instagram. has found a really nice fossil find at the moment, so I'm keeping an eye on that for him while he's not here this morning. Well, I'm a bit further down the beach today looking for ichthyosaur backbones now in amongst the uh, boulders. I'll have a look on that outer boulder arc, but uh, sadly at the moment, the beach is covered in a lot of sand probably swept in from the Lyme Regis sandy stretch of beach right round near the Cobb and uh, it's fairly heaped up which doesn't allow you to find the fossils in certain pockets now but I'll have a look further down the beach and see what I can pick up and show you. A really lovely day down here on the Dorset coast. I'll try and find you some more fossils to have a look at very shortly. I've made my way down towards Charmouth Here's a piece of the right rock. You can see just down here between the boulders. I'll try and tug that out. Yeah, it's loose enough. There you go. A little ammonite from the Jurassic. Quite a nice bit of layering on the outside. Splits like slate, sharp ring to the rock. Let me give it a crack with the hammer. See how nicely that opens up, and that's a shame because that particular bit there has opened up where there was a calcite fault, a calcite seam in the piece, and it's split along that sort of rotten margin there. There you go. Stick it back together a bit, and uh, there'll be some more in there. I can actually glue that one, but it's a bad job. Sometimes they're just too eroded, too weathered away, or calcite veins in the rock make that kind of difference. The beach is nice and clear now of people. The tide's on its way back in. I found some pockets of iron pyrites down here, the fool's gold. So I have a look in those on the beach. And you can see quite a big fragment there of an ammonite. Quite a few suture patterns on that uh, ammonite fragment. 
And I'm gonna look in the iron pyrites, the fool's gold, I'm gonna start scrabbling around in this material and see if I can get a uh, nice little ammonite preserved in the fool's gold. Well, in this little concentration here on the beach, can you see the ammonite? Can you spot the ammonite there in the fool's gold? The sea has had a bit of a play with it and worn around the outer edges. There is an ammonite preserved in the fool's gold, an iron pyrites ammonite. A little bit worse for wear, but uh, where you see all this uh, concentration of metallic material, the heavy iron pyrites material, those are the sort of areas where you could have a chance of getting more concentrated in these pockets on the beach. There's one. Once again, pretty worse for wear that is. The sea has uh, eroded that quite a bit and uh, it is a shame what the sea does, eroding away the fossils as well as eroding them out onto the beach and showing you where they are. Well, I'm heading back towards Lyme Regis now with the tide coming in and the sea is well on its way in, firmly coming in. So I'm heading back and uh, just checking out along the periphery any bits and pieces as I go, heading back along the mudslides to see what I can find. I'm on the 2008 landslide. There's a bit of a bottle there. Very colorful one as well, look at that, sticking out of the mud. I'm on the 2008 Lyme Regis landslide. That is very colorful. And uh, walking back into town as the tide comes in. Let's have a look at this. The glass melted at over a thousand degrees C in the uh, Victorian bottle dump. And uh, that was because a very, very oil rich layer, the bituminous shale layer in the back of the cliffs used to catch fire when iron pyrites oxidized during the summer months and then set it on fire and um, the bottles melted. So it was quite a, uh, a scene. They called it the lime volcano with the cliffs all belching smoke. You can see that bottle there, very melted. Must have been quite a heat to melt that. I'm gonna wash that off. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Well, just heading back towards Lyme now. And uh, I'm gonna go through past the cutoff point back into Lyme Regis. Well, there's my steps up onto the new sea wall and then back into Lyme Regis. It's always fun to see these large ammonites here that are being washed by the sea's actions. You can see the circular shapes there. A couple of ammonites preserved in the limestone pavement block. So let's head off, head back into town. And uh, thanks for watching.